Hello, Steve White, Trick Boy 89 for Steve Arts 89. Well, I have been up all night. Um, they started dropping the um, Star Trek Day videos around 7 a.m. in Australia, and it's it's after 10 a.m. now, and um, around I think they started around six or seven. I saw the Discovery one first, and I decided, well, I'll just wait up. I'll do a video for. The Strange New Worlds one and the Discovery one and maybe the Lower Decks one. So I did the one for um, Discovery and even then I was so tired I don't know if it's coherent I might have to do it again. But I've been waiting the last couple of hours and I got the Discovery, I mean I got the Deep Space Nine panel, I got the Voyager panel, I got the um, Enterprise panel, um, but what I didn't get was the Strange New Worlds panel, I got the Lower Decks panel um, and we've got a few segments from the original series and a few segments from the Picard one. So I've been waiting for hours and nothing has dropped in the last hour, so it looks like we're just not getting them. So, damn it. Um, so I'm just going to talk about what they did say. Um, now Lower Decks did drop two interesting um, bits. The first part is that Q is going to be in the episode, in an episode. Um, it sounds as though he's not a major part of the episode, uh, not a major part of the story. He just pops up. I'm guessing it's in the vein of some of the other stories where it's the C story, which really would be a real, like, next-gen ep episode. But um, we probably just see him for a second from their point of view or something. And in a uh, trailer later in the um, panel, they actually show Q for a second. And they, I thought it, they said he was voiced by John D. Lancey, but it didn't sound like it. He was just there for a second. So that's interesting, but it looks like it's going to be underplayed. Um, and the other thing I found interesting was to find out just how far they were into production when they went into lockdown. They apparently they showed some some animations, half done animation, and they had to do their ADR and their their voice acting basically from their closets and home studios that they had to make. So they were that far back into filming. I assumed they'd done the voice, at least the voices and most of the animation, they're just finishing the animation, but they were doing, they really had to work hard to finish the show um, in lockdown, so that was interesting. Um, the rest of that panel for Lower Decks was basically just a bunch of back slapping and trying to be funny, and um, they all seem okay. I, I like Rufford's, um character, um, the actor who plays him. Um, and, um, Boima seems okay. Um, the rest, I don't know, they were just a lot of compliments, a lot of we love our characters. There wasn't a lot aside from those two little um, nuggets there. And, um, for the original series, George Shikai, um, Will Wheaton, um, was talking to him and he just seemed too excited. He just was like a puppy dog, like, like the whole time. He had to calm down a bit. Um, now, George, I love George, I've met George twice, and I met his husband as well, um, he's very nice, um, but he, he just, he did tell stories I've already heard before, so there wasn't anything new, but there was a new part to one of the stories, which um, Will Wheaton got really excited about. Um, when he goes through the old story about how John D.F. Black sat down next to him and was talking about how, oh, I'm going to have Sulu go crazy with a samurai sword, he said, um, actually, I played Robin Hood, um, you know, I was swashbuckling with, you know, um, sword play and that, um, and he said, okay, I'll change it to that. But then afterwards, we all know he didn't know how to um, fence, so he had to go out and learn, and when he did, because um, he grew up watching the Errol Flynn um, Robin Hood, um, with, uh, I think, Basil Rathbone was the other actor um, in it, who he was fighting with, um, he went and he found um, a fencing instructor, and it was the same guy who, and I have lost where I wrote that down, um, he actually found the same guy who taught um, Errol Flynn his choreography, and when he was doing um, his close-ups, this guy, was, I think it was someone Faulkner, was the one who was actually doing the other side of the fencing, so his back was to the camera, so George was actually watching him when he was a kid, so he then got to learn from him, um, so that was interesting. I hadn't heard that part of that story either, so, I mean, but I'm not getting as excited as Will Wheaton did. Um, 
And the other two stories we both have heard before. We've heard about him in the internment camp, um, all that, and just it's kind of more important now of how America is. Um, but we've heard that story before, so I'm not going to retell that because um, we all know that he was taken into an internment camp for Japanese Americans who just didn't. They were Jap. They were Americans. And they did nothing other than just look like the other Japanese people. Um, they were taken away, they lost their business, their house, everything, and they were put back out into Skid Row, basically, with $25 each, and that's it, um, with their lives destroyed, like, five, ten years later, um, and how difficult that was. And the other story they, they talked about was about diversity, um, and about um, how great it is now to have gay characters in Star Trek, because, and this was the interesting part for me, was I had heard that he'd talked to Gene about having a gay character on the show um, at like a pool or a party or something and what I thought was I thought it was during the first or second or third season during like a cast party or something but actually it was after the show had wrapped and I'm like well then why are you talking about it now because basically he was in the closet and he talked about being in the closet and um, he just you know talked about how difficult that was and he was an activist for a lot of other causes but he couldn't be active about his cause and now how great it is now that everything is so open um, so those were his three videos, and there were two videos from the, and they were like four minutes each, so they were decent. Um, there were three from the Picard um, panel, and they just talked about directing for two of them, um, and stories we've already heard about directing, and Jonathan started um, the directing thing on Next Gen, and Patrick followed him, and he, they really struggled to get um, the, um, the scenes from... A Fistful of Data's finished and that because of the light was going and all that and just some good stories about that, that they enjoyed. But then the new part was talking about um, Nepenthe and how they didn't look like their characters, it didn't feel like next gen. Um, it was just great to see each other and be in character and embrace each other and just the feeling and how they felt about doing it all. They didn't, the, the, all these clips are only a minute and a half. And then the other clips were um, from. Strange New Worlds, and they just talked about um, just getting into character, who they, there were two of them, who, who, who their characters were, and they didn't give anything away. Um, Pike said, well, yes, we're going to explore how he accepts his promotion and moves on and how he deals with making those decisions or accepting those decisions that he knows and they're going to lead to things and all that, so how they're going to treat that character which I'm still not sure how I feel about doing that to that character because it kind of destroyed the character. It makes him more complicated and possibly interesting, but you don't get to enjoy Pike just being Pike because you know he's got a death sentence and he's hit and it's just, it just affects everything about him. And the other thing was just um, uh, Rebecca and Roman talking about how they've sort of worked out what um, number one's backstory is going to be, but obviously she didn't say anything about it. Um, and that was really it. They didn't really go into much about that. Um, so I'm hoping they drop the whole panel later. And I'm hoping we, there's more than that. I don't know why we only got a couple of videos for those. But, um, I mean, it was interesting. Um, I would have liked more. I'm hoping those weren't the best bits. I'm hoping there is more in those panels for Picard and Strange New Worlds. Um, the others I'll watch tomorrow because, I, I mean, I did watch the discussion. Deep Space Nine one, and it was very moving. They were talking about um, Renee, who I was lucky enough to meet, but I didn't meet Aaron, and I could have, and I regretted it. I don't know why I didn't do it. He was also in one of the Amityville films, which I love because I'm a huge horror fan. Um, he was in um, The Evil Escapes, the first TV movie one, um, with Jane Wyatt, who of course played Spock's mother in Star Trek, the original series in Star Trek 3 and 4. I wish I'd met him now. I regret not meeting him. Um, and that was very moving, but I was too tired to get emotional. I probably could have cried if I'd, if I'd tried. And oh, the other thing on um, Strange New Worlds was one of the writers was talking about how amazing it is that she's now writing the black characters as a black writer on this show because when she saw the show she saw that I have a future and now she gets to be in that future and create that future. So that was interesting. And also um, Akiva Goldsman talked about um, in his section, um, he talked about how, as um, a Jewish man, um, 
Was he Jewish? Oh, God. He was talking about being an immigrant. I can't remember where his parents came from. Um, and just how important diversity and all that is and that he gets to basically create a show that is about that. Um, that means a lot to him. It means a lot to his family. So that was interesting. He's almost crying. Um, but the clips are really too short to get invested and to get a lot of information. I, and he didn't go a lot into his history, so I'm not sure why was that important to him, other than just, I guess, the immigrant experience and what that um, meant for his parents and that. Um, so it was interesting, but I just hope we get the whole panels. And I'm going to go to sleep. I am hungry. I am tired. Um, I shouldn't have sat up waiting for this stuff. I should have just gone to bed and just waited for them to all be there when I woke up in the morning. But I was sort of interested in people were dropping videos and bits were coming out and um, I just kind of got sucked into it, but I'm going to go to sleep. So feel free to share, like, comment, subscribe, let me know what you think, let me know anything you know, <laughs> so I don't know anything more than what I've already said. Um, I don't think we're going to get much more between now and um, when the shows start to air, discovering that. So, yeah, that's it. I'm exhausted.